evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, like Malcolm said, my name is Mark. Just a little bit about me. Um, I was born and raised in the Philippines, and when I was 14, we moved to Miami. Um, I lived there for about 12 years, and then I moved around. Um, I went to uni in Miami. Um, I was met there when I was 20, my second year of uni, and became a disciple on campus. Right after uni, I got hired to serve as a campus intern for the Miami Church, and then I moved to North Carolina, then I moved to Boston, and then from Boston, they asked me to move to London to lead the student ministry, and that's where I am currently, leading the students there. Um, last week, when, or actually, it wasn't last week, about three weeks ago, when I visited for the first time, Tim asked me, oh, okay, so we're doing this series you know, with the young people, you know, do not look, do not let anyone look down on you because you're young. Basically, we're asking them to teach the the congregation about what God has been teaching you, and I would like for you to speak. So tonight, I get this privilege to to talk to you guys about what God has been teaching me. But I'm doing it a little different because the things that God are teaching me right now is not very clear yet it's an ongoing teaching but I would like to talk about what God has taught me in the past two years you know I think we, we go through different things in life and sometimes we don't really know what they are or what, what they mean but you know one thing for sure God is teaching you something I've moved quite a lot. Um, I've moved four, or four times in the last four years, I think. So, to be honest, I don't know what God is teaching me from then, but I think now I can see clearly that God was teaching me how to love deeply. I think in the past two years, that has been made clear, and tonight we're going to talk about love. Um, turn with me to John chapter 15. John is the apostle of love, so rightfully so, we got to read one of his writings. Since this is about, you know, do not let, let anyone look down on you because you're young, we're going to get all young up in here right now. Um, if you've been following the films, film industry, you notice that... In the last 15 years, superhero movies yeah. Yeah. are a big deal. Big. Yeah. And quite recently, I've been watching them. You guys know Jack Leggan? Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Jack Leggan, myself, and Steve Schnell, we went to, to see X-Men Apocalypse. And we were so hyped. Like, dude, that was awesome! What was your favorite superhero? And then we started talking about different characters that we like. But also, we started talking about this different character or different superhero powers that we like. So, let me ask you: What if you are to, you know, choose one superpower? What would it be? Memory. Memory. <laughs> <laughs> awesome memory. Manipulate time. Ooh. Strong legs. Strong legs. I would. I would like Wolverine's superpower. You know, he regenerates, so he stays young all the time. But what else? If that's it, then that's it. But we almost have this fascination about superheroes. You know, I, I recently got into Harry Potter books. Um, so Harry Potter is not even a superhero, but I'm like, oh, this dude is awesome. I don't know why. He's kind of nerdy, and he has glasses, and he's weird. Um, but, <laughs> but I'm captured by Harry Potter, and I don't know why. Maybe because he can do different things that I cannot do. And I'm... I'm starting to be obsessed with it. And we all have this thing 
about superheroes and super special powers. And the more I think about it, the more I realize it's because I think deep inside we want to do something extraordinary. Deep inside we want to change the things around us. Deep inside we want to impact people. And we, we admire superheroes because can, they can do that with their special abilities. But the more I think about it, we have the same capabilities that they do. In John chapter 15, let's read together, starting in verse 1, it reads, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burnt. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in His love. I have told you this so that, you, so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends, for everything that I have learned from my Father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that whatever you ask in my, in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command, love each other. Now, according to this passage, we can make an impact with love. You know, we have this incredible ability to change things around us. It says we can bear fruit that will last. You know, we can bear fruit that will change people's eternity. We can bear fruit that will change our surrounding. If only we learn how to love like Jesus commanded us to. You know, the more I think about it, about it, you know, we are we are superheroes. And our power is a love. That is, you know, though you the more I think about it, you think about all the super special powers. Love is kind of a special power. You know, it transcends it transcends time and space. In John chapter 6, 17, it says that, you know, Jesus was praying to, to God. He says that you have loved me before the creation of the world. So love existed before the universe was even created. Before time and space, there was love. That's how incredible love is. Before anything ever existed, there was Jesus there was God, and there was love. And now, Jesus is saying, you have access to this great thing. Love one another. If you do this, you will bear much fruit. What is he talking about? Is he talking about fruit of the Spirit, or fruit meaning making disciples? Yes. Both. Thing, all, all kinds of fruits. He's talking about all kinds of fruits. That's what love creates. 
And this is what God expects us to have. You know, but the thing is, how do you access this love? How do you make a difference? How can you bear much fruit according to this passage? You know, if we're going to make a difference, it says here that we must remain in the vine. If we do not remain in the vine, we will not bear fruit. Now, who does not want to bear fruit here? Who wants to bear fruit? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Everyone. So, it's simple. It says here, remain in the vine. It's so easy. You know, you gotta go to the source of love. In 1 John, it says, God is love. So if you want to know the true meaning of love, you got to go to the source. You know, it's funny because summertime is time for weddings. And when I think of weddings, I always think of, oh, it's true love. <laughs> but if you look at the statistics right now of our society, more than 50% end up in divorce. But the more you also think about our society, you know, as year, years go by, it, it bec it's becoming more and more atheistic. Mm. You know, I, don't, I've not, I have not done the studies, but I do think they correlate each other. You know, the further you go away from God, the further you go away from the true meaning of love. Mm. And if you don't go back to the source of it, you will not learn how to love. You know, it says here that it is the only way you will bear fruit. You know, for me, moving around, I'm naturally apathetic. I, I you know, even towards people and towards situations around me. I, I like to care about myself. I'm you know, naturally selfish. So moving around kind of forced me to care about other people. Because before, when I was in Miami, oh, I've got my friends, even ch friends in the church, and that was it. I have my own bubble of friends. But when I moved to North Carolina, and I moved to Boston, and I moved to London, I had to create new friends. Because now my friends from Miami are gone. But... For me, I was like, okay, I, I'm pretty arrogant, so I think I'm pretty talented socially, and I think people like me naturally, so I was like, they're going to flock around me. That's just who I am. But, you know, God taught me, okay, this is not going to work like that. You're going to need to initiate and in making some friends. You're going to need to go after this person, even the people that you don't think are cool. I was like, oh, seriously? <laughs> like, even the uncool people in the church, there's no uncool people here. You guys are <laughs> super cool. But, you know, back there, you know, in Boston, in North Carolina, even in central London, there's so many of them. <laughs> But, for me, okay, it will get lonely pretty quickly if I do not initiate all these people. And I found out, hey, it, it's actually awesome. Like, it took, like, it, it took me, like, so quickly to, to gain friends because I initiated. While before, I'll wait for people to initiate. And now I found out, wow, this is actually awesome. And I applied it to my evangelism. You know what? Before, when I used to study with people, study the Bible, they become my studies. You know, oh, this is the person I'm studying with. I don't really treat them as friends. They're my studies, and I put them on my, my journal and my little notes. Oh, this is the next study I'm going to do with them. They became projects. And I lose the heart 
behind what I'm doing. I lose the heart. They become names and numbers instead of souls that God really wanted. You know, I, I forgot to love them. You know, and as I read the Bible, you know, when, when Jesus looked at the rich young ruler, he, it, the Bible says that he looked at him and loved him. And even though the rich young ruler did not decide to follow him, Jesus' heart was still to love him. And in my head and in my heart, I want that. I did not have that, so I had to force myself to learn that. And as, as I studied with, with, as I studied the Bible with people before, once they stop studying because they don't want to be Christians, my communication with them ends. But now that I'm learning this new way of interacting and loving people, I found that, wow, I'm still in contact with his people, we're still friends. You know what? It's God's timing. Maybe not right now, maybe later on, but at least they know that I care, and at least they know who to turn to when they actually, you know, come to their senses. I'm finding this super effective when it comes to making an impact around me. I gotta love this people, but I did not come up with it on my own. I had to really learn how did Jesus love? How did Jesus interact with the people around him? How did he treat the, the, the sinners around him? But the thing is, I gotta learn from Jesus. I can't come up with it on my own. But sometimes, I wanna be self-reliant. That's how I am, and I get called out on it for being the for being independent and self-reliant all the time. I think probably 90% of my discipling times, it's always like, dude, you're just so independent and so reliant, self-reliant, you gotta change. I was like, okay, I do. You know, it's been eight years, I feel like there's no progress on this, because that's just my nature, and I'm trying to change it. But to me, when it comes to learning how to love, I cannot be self-reliant. When, when I was a kid growing up in the Philippines, we had a drought. Um, so the water company would shut water, our water supply, from I think 10 a.m. to about 4.30 p.m. So there is no running water between those those hours, so you you get this this um just containers full of water, but if you fail to fill them, you have no water for the rest of the day until five you know four thirty comes around, and it's summer, and it's not good. So my neighborhood, it's funny because you know they're very very creative in the way they do things. So they found. The, the main for the whole block. So they turned it on so we all have running water. <laughs> and then, you know, obviously the water company realized, oh, why is this water running? They went in, you know, welded some kind of cage around the main so that people won't access it. And the neighborhood guys got a saw and saw the, <laughs> the cage out and turned it on again the next day. And then, so, the water company realized it again, and then, you know, you know what? We're just going to bury it in concrete. They uh -oh. buried it in about three feet of concrete. So, the neighborhood guys <laughs> grabbed a couple of sledgehammers <laughs> and got it back on again so that our neighbor, our block, has water supply again. And I think finally the... The water company got fed up. You know what? Just let it be. We can't do anything about it. They keep just turning it on and turning it on. But the thing is, the, like when I think about it, water is necessary. You can't live without it. You can't function without water. You cannot live your life normally without water. So we're desperate for water, and we would do anything to get water. 
to get some. Now that's how we should be when it comes with God. You should have the feeling, I can't get enough of this. I can't function normally without times with God. We sing that song, you know, how does it go again? I need your love. Um, you know, I can't. Wow, I blanked out on I need your love. It goes like, I can't go a day without some time to pray. I can't face a day without some time to pray. You know, that, that's the way it goes, but sometimes we can't go there without some time to pray. You know, I even realize that about myself, because I'm so stinking self-reliant, oh, I'll go a day without praying, or I'll go a day with just five minutes of prayer. But if you're really going to attach yourself to God, like he describes here, so that you can bear fruit that will last. Five minute prayer will cut, will not cut it. No. I'm gonna need more than that. And for me, that was a learning experience. Because I'm in I'm being introduced to this new places, new new cultures, new people. <coughs> I need to learn how to love this people if I'm gonna make an impact. So for me, that's one of the things that I learned. Okay, I need to attach myself to God so, so that I can learn how to love correctly. You know, another part of it was that, okay, it says here that you have a responsibility. You know, you have a responsibility. Jesus said that I did not choose or... You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you may go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command, love one another. You know, as much as I attach myself to God so that I can learn how to love, I got to express the same love. You know, I got to express the same love. It's funny because... We have, or I think the society have different definitions of love. You know, it can be described as euphoria or excitement. You know, bonding, the butterflies that you feel, those are love. Passion and the tsunami of feel-good chemicals in your brain. That's what love is. You know, something that does not hurt. That's what love is. No. Oh, no. What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. <laughs> that's, what, that's, what, that's what society thinks of love. Something that does not hurt. Something that feels good. But the Bible describes it differently. The Bible describes it differently. God says love is selfless and sacrificial. Love is patient and kind. It's forgiving and gracious. It's about reconciliation and humility. It's about considering others above yourself. That, that is what love means in the Bible. And for me, I had to change my concept of love. You know, my, my friends in the world, oh, you know, as long as we're cool, we're loving one another. As long as we don't have conflicts, we're loving one another. The thing is, it's funny because that really go, that goes against my nature. Other people are conflict avoiders. I think a lot of people would describe me as conflict seekers. <laughs> I, I, there was one time. Oh man, this is so bad. But early in my disciples' life, I knew that this one of this brother in my campus ministry was just spreading spreading rumors. So me and another brother, we gotta find him and rebuke the tar out of him. That's what we're gonna do. So we called him about 20 times and he did not answer. I was like, I know where he lives. 
this is what we're going to do. So, we drove to where he lived, knock on the door, and no one was answering the door. But then, I heard, you know, scrambling around inside the house, he's inside. You know what, we're just going to bang on his door until he answers. You know, bang on his door, bang on his door. And eventually, 20 minutes later, he answered the door. And we went inside and rebuked the mess out of him. How dare you? You're an idiot. You're spreading all these rumors. And he was crying. And I felt so good that he was crying. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you deserve to cry. And so his mom, his mom came in and supported us and backed us up. I was like, yeah, even your mom knows <laughs> you're a stinking sinner. And I felt so good. And you know what? He became my flatmate. And I knew that he was struggling throughout the times that we lived together. But because of that, there was just so much distance between us that he never got open about the sins that is going on in his life to the point that it cost him his salvation. You know, he ended up leaving God and I don't even know the reason why. Because I think, you know what? I gotta do this. I just gotta rebuke the sin out of him without considering what's really going on. You know, I thought I was being loving by, you know what? I just gotta take the sin out of him. But it damaged our relationship so much that even the fact that we're living together, I did not know what was going on in his life. And he walked away from God without me knowing the reason. You know, I couldn't even reason with him to stay because he wouldn't speak to me about anything. You know, I, that was a hard lesson to learn. For me, I was like, man, I thought I was really loving but now I've created this distance between me and this brother. You know, because I thought I was, I was doing the right thing. But love is about giving grace. Love is about considering others. Love is about knowing and caring for people. And I failed to do that. So for me, moving from other places, I've learned, okay, I can't do the same mistakes. You know, I can't just seek out conflicts because that's what my nature is, is wanting to do. You know, I gotta learn how to see things. And you know, moving to Boston, it was, it was a crazy experience. And even, you know, like Doug Arthur and other leadership there did not see what was going on. Um, basically, when I moved there, the first week that I was there, four brothers left God. The first week, I was like, told me I'm going to have ten people in my ministry. Now, five, four of the five brothers are gone. But it's, it's, it's weird because I was like, you know what, I, I still got to love these guys. And I got to see where they're coming from and I got to consider their perspective. And it's, it's really cool how God has changed different ways um, in my interaction with them. Because my heart was like, you know what, I don't really want to care because I barely know them. I just got here. You know, I know them for a week and now they're walking away from God. I should not care. That's their issue. You know, I just start new. But I decided, you know what, I'm, I'm actually going to see what's going on, and I'm going to care. And none of them has turned back their ways yet, but one of the guys, or actually two of the guys who, who left God, when they decided, okay, you know what, maybe I should consider this again, you know, send, send me a phone call or send me a text, you know what? This is what's going on. I'm not sure what's going on with my life, but I want to reconsider this decision. So to me, that was a new thing because they actually know who to turn to when they need God. And now, okay, I just 
got to learn how to love deeply. You know, and now, my prayer you know, is, I think I pray about this every time I pray, so that God would expand the walls of my heart so I can love more, so I can love deeper. And I've been praying that for the past two years. And I think God has been doing that. And it's, it's been a almost like a magical thing for our student ministry. For us, it was not a smooth transition. It's a new culture, new place to learn. But I think because of that, for me, it was, it was an easier thing to, to really learn the tendencies of our students and you know, easy, easier to, to really win them over. And even to the point that, you know what, it, I don't know how to convert British people, but I'm just going to love them. I'm just going to learn how to win them over. It was, you know, it was not what we were expecting, but hey, we saw three baptisms from our student ministry because of loving them. And to me, that was, you know what, I think I just got to learn more how to love more, maybe we'll convert more people. Now, to me, that was, that was an effective way to really bear fruit. So the past two years, God has been teaching me how to love. And hopefully, this has been an encouraging time, encouraging lessons. And hopefully, we can all learn how to love. Because as much as we admire all the superheroes that we've been watching, you guys are the true superheroes if you just learn how to love. Thank you very much. Amen.